Get ready for the Northern Hemisphere's ultimate rugby showdown, from missing stars to favourites. Let's dive into everything you need to know before the 2024 Six Nations kicks off. The 2024 Six Nations will kick off on the 2nd of February in Paris, where the six best European teams will go head to head to find out who's the greatest. The format involves six teams, Ireland, France, England, Scotland, Wales and Italy, going head to head in a single round robin style tournament. This means that you don't play everyone home and away in one year, the alternate years. Which is actually quite an important factor because most of the time the home team wins. So in a year where you have three home games, you're more likely to win a championship than in a year you only have two. There's five rounds spread across seven weeks, with rest weeks between round two and three and round three and four. This is a slightly different Six Nations to other years, with it being the beginning of a new World Cup cycle. With the World Cup having been at the end of 2023, a lot of players and coaches retire or move on and there's generally some upheaval for the Six Nations in years like this. However, from a coaching standpoint, it's relatively unchanged, with the only new coach being Gonzalo Caseda, who replaced Kieran Crowley with Italy after they exited the Rugby World Cup. Every other team has the same coach as last year, which is fairly uncommon. In 2020, there was four new head coaches, with only England and Scotland staying the same. Part of the lack of shake-up is because of England and Wales replacing their coaches at the end of 2022, with less than a year to go to the World Cup. But there has been a fair bit of player turnover for some of the sides. Ireland have lost stalwart fly half Johnny Sexton, and Wales have also lost their long-serving number 10, Dan Bigger along with other notable players who were in the last Six Nations but won't be in this one like Shirt Hogg for Scotland, Ben Youngs for England and Justin Tipperick, Alan Wynne-Jones and Lee Halfpenny for Wales. Other notable absences for this Six Nations is England captain Owen Farrell, who has chosen not to play in this year's Six Nations due to mental health reasons. He may have also played his last game for England already, with there being rumours of him moving to France. And under current rules, England players can't play for England unless they play in the country. And France are also missing their main halfback partnership in Anton Dupont and Roman Intermac, with Dupont joining the Sevens team to try and play in this year's Olympics, and Intermac still being injured from before the World Cup. There's also been some reports for battles over players. In Rugby Union, you can play for a nation you were born in, your grandparent was born in, or you've resided in for five years or longer. These rules sometimes lead to battles for players, particularly in the UK and Ireland, due to a lot of movement between the nations. I'm recording this before squads have been announced, but right now, Scotland and England are battling over four players in Finn Smith, Tom Roebuck, Aaron Reid, and Gus War, while Wales and England are fighting over Emmanuel Faye Waboso. But we'll maybe see soon who these teams opt to represent. The strongest teams going into this Six Nations are probably Ireland and France. Ireland won the Grand Slam in 2023, which is winning all five games, and France did the same the year before in 2022. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on my predictions video for this year's championship. This has also been represented by the Bookies, with France being favourites, at least in most UK betting sites, and Ireland being not far behind. But the loss of Sexton and Dupont could be worrying for these sides, as Ireland have often looked a shadow of themselves when Sexton was rotated out, and Dupont's breaks and skill with the ball are so important that when he got injured at the Rugby World Cup, speculation about his well-being was making front page news in France. France have also just negotiated a new deal with the clubs around player release for international windows, which could be slightly worrying, but I do need to caveat that this information is from an article article that has been translated through Google so it might not be 100% correct. But they've agreed to reduce the number of players in the Six Nations squad from 42 to 34 and six players will leave the squad on Wednesday to rejoin their clubs. These players will be replaced by fringe players from the clubs that have the least amount of players in the French squad, excluding Toulouse, Bordeaux, La Rochelle and Racing 92. Now on the surface that doesn't sound great, but players already return to their clubs before this deal, and actually most unions do this to some extent. And they used to send back 14 players when they had a 42 man squad, as opposed to the 6 with having a 34 man squad. So the main issue is a small squad size, and players leaving on Wednesday when they previously went back on the Thursday, which could impact training. But I don't think this will impact France too much for this 6 nations, but who knows. The dark horses for this year's championship is interesting, because on paper, Scotland are probably the third best team in the tournament, looking at recent years, but Wales and England both went further in the Rugby World Cup, with England putting on a great show against the eventual champions, South Africa, in the semi-final, and actually getting the furthest in the World Cup out of all the teams in the championship. So maybe they can make a step up from last year and surprise everyone with a championship win. And Wales have three home games where they start at home to Scotland, which maybe, man for man, you might say are the better team, but they don't win in Cardiff, and with how much of a confidence team Wales are, a good start 
start against Scotland, and picking up a plucky win the next week in England could be all they need to repeat what they did in 2021 and come into a tournament being written off by everyone, but going on to win it nonetheless. And Italy are rather unfortunately the worst team in the championship, having finished bottom 18 times since they joined in 2000, and have only won one game since 2015. You shouldn't expect much from them, but one of their club sides is sitting second in the United Rugby Championship, so could they build off that and pull off the impossible? Which would add to the massive history of this wonderful championship, which you can learn all about by watching this video about the entire history of the Six Nations right here. Thanks for watching.